video is intended to provide an example of how you will be expected to perform your pre-trip inspection examination. Alright, so to begin with, my wheels are chocked, and my keys in my pocket. As I'm approaching my vehicle, I'm looking, I make sure it's not leaning to one side, which would indicate a flat tire or a suspension problem. Now I'm also looking underneath my vehicle to make sure there's no fluid leaks like coolant, oil, fuel, or grease. And as I approach my vehicle, I see that my clearance lights, my windshield, both windshields, my windshield wipers, my mirrors, my hood mirrors, my outside reflector, my left and right turn signal, four-way emergency flasher, and my clearance light, my low beam, my high beam, and my inner reflector here. On the other side, my outer reflector, my left and right turn signal, four-way emergency flasher, and clearance light. My low beam and high beam and end reflector all are a present, clean, and working properly. All right, now I'm going to go to my engine compartment. We're clear. Clear. My passenger side engine compartment. My alternator is securely mounted. My wires are intact and my wires are not worn or frayed. My belt is not crack freighter glazed and has a half inch to three quarter inch deflection. My exhaust system is securely mounted. There's no broken loose or missing parts and there's no soot which would indicate uh, an exhaust leak. That's everything on this side. On my driver's side engine compartment, my air compressor is securely mounted, my hoses are attached, it's not leaking oil. If it were belt driven, the, I would check to make sure the belt is not cracked, frayed, or glazed, and there's a half inch to a three quarter inch of deflation. My oil is not milky in color, which would indicate a coolant in the oil, there's no foreign particles. And it's between the add and the full line. If we were below the add line, I'd add one gallon of 15W40. My power steering fluid is at the proper level. My water pump is securely mounted, not leaking. And its hose is also not leaking, it's not cracked or frayed. And its belt is not cracked, frayed, or glazed with a half inch to three quarter inch deflection. My coolant, if it does not have a sight glass or a clear reservoir, with the engine cool, I'll remove the radiator cap, make sure that the fluid is no more than three inches below the top of the cap. On my steering system, my steering linkage is securely mounted, not broken, uh, has no broken, loose, or missing parts, and it's not bent. Steering gearbox is securely mounted and the hoses are attached, securely attached. My uh, pitman arm, drag link, steering knuckle, steering arm, and my spindle are all securely mounted with no damage and no broken loose or missing parts. And my tie rod is securely attached to my steering arm and the tie rod is not bent. All right, so now I'm going to my suspension. Oh, and uh, also my castle nuts and cotter pins are in place and none are missing. So now I'm going to my suspension. My spring mounts are securely mounted with no broken, loose, or missing parts. That's both mounts front and back. My springs, they're none broken, missing, or misaligned. If a quarter or more are missing, it'll put my vehicle out of commission. My U-bolts are securely tightened and they're not broken or missing. 
and my shock absorber is securely mounted and not leaking. Now into my brakes. My brake hoses are not cracked, frayed, or leaking. My brake chamber is securely mounted and not leaking. My slack adjuster, there are no broken, loose, or missing parts. My pin and cotter pin are in place, securely attached to the push rod. With my wheels chopped and my parking brake release, there should be no more than one inch of play. My brake drums, they're not cracked, they have no repair wheels. There's no excess, excessive buildup of debris. My linings are at least a quarter inch thick. Must have, they must have at least a quarter inch of thickness and they're not oil soaked or cracked. Now on to my wheels. My tires, front tires, must have at least four thirty-second inch tread depth. Must be virgin rubber on the front, man. They cannot be regrooved or recapped or retread. Inside and out, they have no cuts, bruises, or blisters. Must have 90 to 100 PSI. Check that with an air gauge. Make sure there's a metal cap on the end of the valve stand. My rims. Inside and out, there's uh, no cracks, bends, or repair welds. And my lug nuts are securely tightened. There's no rusty streaks, which would indicate a loose lug nut. My hub oil seal is not leaking. All right, now on to the driver fuel. My lights, come on. Left and right turn signal, four-way emergency flasher, and clearance light is present, clean, not damaged, and working properly. My def tank is securely mounted and it's not leaking. And my def tank cap is securely tightened and it's not leaking. Door, driver's side door opens and closes properly. And my mirror is securely mounted and not loose. My fuel tank is securely mounted, not leaking. Fuel tank cap is securely tightened and not leaking. So here, I'm going to go ahead and move behind the cab. All right, for the passenger side in my engine compartment, I'm making sure that my alternator is securely mounted, the wires are intact, and they're not worn or frayed, and that my belt has, is not cracked, frayed, or glazed, and has half inch to three quarter inch deflection. My exhaust system, making sure that it's securely mounted, no broken loose missing parts, and no black soot, which would indicate an exhaust leak. And I'm making sure that my water pump is securely mounted, it's not leaking, and my hose is not leaking, it's not cracked, frayed, or far leaking. All right, let's go to the driver's side. So in my driver's side engine compartment, my coolant, if it does not have a sight glass or clear reservoir with uh, the engine cool, I remove the radiator cap, make sure the fluid is no more than three inches below the top of the cap. My oil is not milky in color, which would indicate there's coolant in the oil. There's no foreign particles. It's between the add full line. If you were below the add line, I'd add one gallon of 15W40 here. My air compressor is securely mounted. It's not leaking oil. My hose is securely attached. If it were belt driven, I'd uh, check my belt, make sure it's not cracked, frayed, or glazed, and that it has a half inch to three quarter inch deflection. And my power steering is at the, my fluid's at the proper level, and it's not leaking, and the hose is attached. All right, on my steering system. My steering linkage is securely mounted, no broken, loose, or missing parts, and it's not bent. My steering box, steering gearbox, is securely mounted and its hose is securely attached. The pitman arm, my drag link, my steering knuckle, my steering arm, and my spindle are all securely mounted with no broken, loose, or missing parts, and they're not damaged. My uh, steering arm is securely attached to my tie rod. My tie rod is not bent and my castle nuts and cotter pins are in place and none are missing. And all my suspension, my spring mounts are securely mounted. There's no broken loose or missing parts. That's both mounts front and back. My springs, they're not broken, missing, or misaligned. If a quarter or more were missing, it put my vehicle out of commission. My U-bolts are securely tightened. They're not broken or missing. 
my shock absorber is securely mounted and not leaking. All right, my uh, brake system. My brake hoses are not cracked, frayed, or leaking. My brake chamber is securely mounted and not leaking. My slack adjuster, is, there is no broken, loose, or missing parts. The pin and cotter pin are in place, securely attached to the push rod. With my parking brakes released and my wheels chopped, should be no more than one inch of play. My brake drums have no cracks, no repair wells. Uh, have, they have no excess buildup of debris and my brake linings are at least a quarter inch thick, not oil soaked or cracked. On my wheels. On the front of the truck, my tires have to have at least four thirty-second inch tread depth. They cannot be regrouped, recapped, or retread. They must be virgin rubber. It must be 90 to 100 PSI, checked with an air gauge, and have a metal cap on the end of the valve stem. And they cannot have inside or out any cuts, bruises, or blisters. My uh, wheels, my rims, inside and out, can have no cracks, cannot have any cracks, bends, or repair wells. My lug nuts must be securely tightened, no rusty streaks indicating a loose lug nut. My hub oil seal is not leaking. Alright, and my driver door opens and closes properly. My mirror is securely mounted and it's not loose. My fuel tank securely mounted and it's not leaking. My fuel tank caps is securely tightened and not leaking. Over here, I've got my left and right turn signal, four-way emergency flasher, and clearance light. It's presently not damaged and working properly. So behind my cab, there's no visible damage, no missing rivets or bolts. My lights and my reflectors are presently not damaged and working properly. My exhaust system, the exhaust system is securely mounted and it uh, has no black soot which would indicate an exhaust leak. My drive shaft is not cracked, bent, or broken. It's securely mounted and not cracked, bent, or broken. And the, and the universal joint is free of foreign objects. My steps and my catwalk are securely mounted to my frame. My frame has no loose or missing uh, nuts or bolts, no cracks or breaks or repair wheels. I'm going to go ahead and get, while I'm here, get my coupling systems, air lines, and electrical lines. So behind the cab, behind the cab, my air lines are secure. They're not tangled, not cracked, frayed, or leaking. And on the front of the trailer, also my air and electrical lines are secure. They're not uh, tangled or cracked, frayed, or leaking. My uh, glad hands are securely attached, and they're not leaking and my electrical line is secure in its coupler. All right, for my front drive axles, on my suspension, my spring mounts are securely mounted. There's no broken, loose, or missing parts. That's both mounts front and back. My springs are not broken, missing, or misaligned. If there was a corner or more that were missing, it would put my vehicle out of commission. My U-bolts, my U-bolts are securely tightened and they're not uh, broken or missing. My shock absorber is securely mounted and not leaking. My torsion bar is securely mounted and my air bellows is securely mounted and not leaking. Now my brake chain, I mean my brake system, excuse me. My hoses are not cracked, frayed, or leaking. My brake chamber is securely mounted. My slack adjuster, my slack adjuster, <laughs> There's no broken, loose, or missing parts. My pin and cotter pin are in place and securely attached to the push rod. With my parking brakes released and my wheels chocked, they should have no more than one inch of play. My brake drums are not cracked. They have no repair wheels and they have no excessive buildup of debris. And my linings have at least a quarter inch or at least a quarter inch thick, not oil soaked or cracked. Now I'm gonna move on to my wheels. Now I have dual wheels, dual tires, excuse me. There's nothing between the tires and my wheels are bud wheels, meaning they have no spacers. 
on my rear tires, I can. Uh, they must have at least two 32nd inch tread depth. They can be regrouped, recap, retread. They have to be 90 to 100 psi. I check that with an air gauge and make sure there's a metal cap on the end of the valve stem and inside and out they can have no cuts, bruises, or blisters. On my rims, inside and out, they can have no cut, uh, cracks, bends, or repair wheels. My lug nuts are securely tight and there's no rusty streaks indicating the loose lug nut and my axle seal is not leaking. Alright, uh, I would examine my rear drive axle in the same manner as I inspected my front drive axle. Alright, I'm going to go ahead before I go backwards and get the coupling system. Alright, so my coupling system, my apron is not cracked, bent, or broken. My fifth wheel skid plate is properly greased and not damaged. My release arm is completely engaged and if it was equipped, and this one is equipped, with a safety latch is secure in place. My mounting bolts, there's no broken, loose or missing mounting brackets, clamps, nuts or bolts. And my fifth wheel and my slide mount are solidly attached to my platform. My fifth wheel locking pins are completely engaged and my platform is securely mounted to my frame. There's no, uh, no missing bolts or pins, and it's not cracked or broken. All right, I'll move under the trailer to get the rest of the couple of pieces. All right, so I'm noticing there's no gap between my upper and lower fifth wheel. My kingpin is not bent. My locking jaws are secure around the shank and not the head of the kingpin. And my uh, fifth wheel is positioned properly so that my tractor will not strike the landing gear during turns. Uh, while I'm behind the truck, I'm going to go ahead and get my lights, and my reflectors and reflective tape, my uh, splash guards. I have left and right turn signals. I have left and right tail lights left and right brake lights, four-way emergency flashers, clearance lights, my reflectors, my reflective tape are all present, clean, not damaged, working properly. My splash guards are securely mounted, not damaged. And if I didn't already say my reflective tape, it's securely, um, it's securely attached, it's not, uh, it's clean, not uh, damaged, it's present and working properly. All right, and my landing gear. My landing gear is uh, completely raised up. My handle is secure, and there's no debris on the bottom of my landing pad. Let's see. I did forget the front of the trailer. Let me come back and get So on the front of the trailer, my bulkhead has no visible damage with no missing rivets or bolts. And my clearance lights are present clean not damaged and working properly. Now on the side of my trailer as well, my bulkhead has no visible damage, no missing rivets or bolts. And my left and right turn signals, four-way emergency flashers, clearance lights. I have clearance light on the top of the trailer, clearance light at the back. My reflectors and my reflective tape are all present, clean, not damaged, and working properly. Under the trailer, my frame's cross members are present. Uh, all cross members are present. They're not cracked or broken. My spare tire rack is securely mounted. If there were a tire in my tire rack, I would check and make sure it is properly inflated, 90 to 100 PSI. My air lines are at least 18 inches off the ground. All right, now I'm making sure, uh, going to my suspension again. In my suspension, my spring mounts 
are uh, securely mounted. There's no uh, broken, loose, or missing parts. That's both mounts, front and back. My springs are not broken, missing, or misaligned. If uh, a quarter or more are missing, it'll put my vehicle out of commission. My U bolts are uh, securely tightened, they're not broken or missing. Uh, I have a torsion bar, it's securely mounted and not damaged. But this trailer does not have shock absorbers nor air bellows. For my brakes, my hoses are not cracked, frayed, or leaking. My chambers, brake chambers, are securely mounted, and not leaking. My slack adjusters, they have no broken, loose, or missing parts. My pin and cotter pin are in place, securely attached to the push rod. With my wheels chocked and my parking brakes released, I should have no more than an inch of play. My brake drums are not cracked. They have no repair wells and no excessive buildup of debris. My brake linings are at least a quarter inch thick. They're not oil soaked or cracked. And now I'm gonna move on to my wheels. Oh, while I'm sitting here, my release of uh, uh, sliding tandem locking pins and release arms are completely engaged. Now on my front trailer axle, I have dual tires, which means uh, I'm looking to make sure there's nothing in between the tires. I have bud wheels, meaning they have no spacers. And my tires on the rear, on the, the trailer, uh, have to have at least two 30 seconds inch tread depth. Can be regrouped and recapped, retread. Inside and out can have no cuts, bruises, or blisters. Must be 90 to 100 PSI. Check that with an air gauge. Make sure there is a metal cap on the end of the valve stem. My lug nuts are securely tightened. There's no rusty streaks to indicate loose lug nuts. My rims inside and out have no cracks, bends, or repair wells. And my hub oil seal is not leaking. All right, I would examine my rear trailer axle in the same way that I inspected my front trailer axle. Before I get to the back of the truck, my splash guards are securely mounted. They're not damaged. If this trailer had ABS, the ABS light would be present here at the bottom of the trailer. All right, at the rear of the trailer, my doors, my hinges, my latches, my weather seal, my cargo, cargo seal, and my door ties are all securely attached and they're working properly. My left and right turn signals, left and right four-way emergency flashers and tail lights, my brake lights and tail lights, clearance lights, Brake light and tail light, left and right turn signal, four way emergency flashers, tail lights. My tag light, my reflectors, and my reflective tape are all present, clean, not damaged, and working properly. My tag is current and present, present current. My DOT or ICC bumper is securely mounted and is not damaged. All right, I would inspect the right side of my truck in the same manner as I inspected the left side of my truck. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is latch my seat belt, make sure it's not ripped or frayed and it latches properly. All right, next I'm gonna take care of my 10 uh, things I can't see and that's my 10 BC fire extinguisher and my three red reflective triangles there under the bunk and my spare fuses or uh, circuit breakers are in the are in the uh, fuse box up there, in the dash. Then I'm gonna check my clutch free play, make sure that I have at least one and a half inches to two inches of free play in the clutch. And my uh, shifter's not excessively loose or binding. Then I'm gonna turn the truck on, making sure that the ABS light comes on and then goes back out. I depress the clutch, crank the truck, Release the clutch slowly, and the ABS light did come on and go out. 
So my oil pressure should go from 5 to 20 PSI within 30 seconds. My temperature gauge should start to rise. My ammeter or voltmeter is charging 12 to 15 volts. My air gauges, my low air warning light and buzzer indicates that I have low air pressure. It should shut off by 60 PSI. All right, if my cruise control were working, I would start my, I would increase my RPMs to build my air pressure faster. My driver's side window is clean, not damaged. My passenger side mirror is clean, not damaged properly, uh, securely mounted, properly adjusted. Both windshields are clean. They have no cracks. They're free of any illegal stickers. My passenger side window is clean, not damaged. Passenger side mirror is clean, not damaged, securely mounted, properly adjusted. My heater and defroster, they're working properly. Turn my lights on, check my dash lights, my high beams, my low beams, my left turn signal, right turn signal, four-way emergency flasher indicators are all working properly. My windshield wipers, windshield wiper uh, arms and blades are secure, they're not damaged, they operate smoothly, and my windshield washers operate properly, they're working properly. My city horn, air horn, are both working properly, and my steering wheel on a 20 inch steering wheel should have no more than two inches or 10 degrees of play. Now that uh, concludes my end cab inspection. Now I'm going to administer my parking brakes inspection. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is allow my air pressure to build up 120 to 125 PSI, or maximum air pressure. I'm going to give it a little help doing that. So I'm going to turn the switch back on to supply power to the gauges. Push in both red and yellow valves. I'm going to roll down my window. I'm listening for air leaks. This gives my gauges time to equalize after the initial pressure drop. 
no leaks. Now I'm gonna look at my gauges. I should be losing no more than three PSI in one minute. Continue. Okay. Now I'm gonna apply the brake pressure in my, I should be losing no more than four PSI in a minute. Continue. Okay, and I didn't. Now I'm gonna begin to fan my brake pedal. Between 90 and 60 PSI, the low air warning light and buzzer should uh, sound and appear. They must sound and appear before pressure drops below 60 PSI. And of course they already have, we can hear them going. So I'm gonna continue to fan my brake pedal. Between 20 and 45 PSI, both valves should pop out. The red first, followed by the yellow, indicating that my spring brakes are working properly. And they did. This, uh, this indicates to me that my spring brakes are working properly and it also concludes my air brakes uh, inspection. Uh, for my service brakes, uh, what we'll be doing when we get ready to pull out for the road test is we'll be moving at a minimum of five miles per hour. With lights, uh, with a light hand on the steering wheel, I'll apply sharp pressure to the brake pedal. And I'm checking for three things and making sure that my, my service brakes work properly, that the vehicle doesn't pull to one side, and that the ABS light does not appear. First thing I'm going to do is put on my seatbelt, make sure it's not ripped or frayed, and that it latches properly. Secondly, I'm going to mention make sure that my uh, 10BC fire extinguisher, three red inflated triangles are in the back, and my fuses and spare circuit breakers are in the uh, are in the dash. Make sure that my vehicle's in neutral. And I'm going to start my engine. I'm making sure that my ABS light comes on and goes out. And it did. All right, I'm making sure uh, to check my gauges. My oil pressure should go from 5 to 20 PSI within 30 seconds. My temperature gauge should start to rise. My ammeter or voltmeter is charging 12 to 15 volts. My air gauges on the low air warning light buzzer indicates that we have low air pressure. It should shut off by 60 PSI. My depth tank is uh, depth tank gauge is working properly. I'm going to increase my engine RPMs with my cruise control to build air pressure faster. My driver's side window is clean and not damaged. Driver's side mirror is clean, not damaged, securely mounted, properly adjusted. Both windshields are clean, not cracked, free of any illegal stickers. My passenger side window is clean and not damaged. My passenger side mirror is clean, not damaged, securely mounted, properly adjusted. My heater and defroster are, are working properly. Let's see. Turn on my lights, make sure that my dash lights, my high beams, my low beams, my left turn signal, right turn signal, four-way emergency flashers or uh, flasher indicators are all working properly. My windshield wipers, my arms and blades are secure, not damaged, and they operate smoothly. And my windshield washers work properly. My city horn and air horn are both working properly and I should have no more than two inches or 10 degrees of play in my 20 inch steering wheel. This is, uh, this concludes my in cab inspection. Now I'm gonna in administer my parking brakes inspection. So firstly, I'm gonna allow my truck to build, my air pressure to build 120 to 125 PSI. Give, give it a little bit of help doing that. With my seatbelt on. All right, now with my seatbelt on, I'm going to 
put the vehicle in first gear. I'm going to push in my yellow valve. The red valve should be out. And when you get on the accelerator for two gentle tugs, I'm going to pull my yellow valve back out. This indicates two things. That my trailer's parking brakes are working properly and that my truck is properly coupled to the trailer. And then with my, with my uh, truck still in first gear, I'm going to press in the red valve. The yellow valve should now be out. Then I'm going to again give it two gentle tugs. I'm going to pull my red valve back out. Put my vehicle in neutral. This indicates that my tractor's parking brakes are working properly. This uh, concludes my parking brakes uh, inspection. And now I'm going to move on to my air brakes inspection. So I'm going to again allow my vehicle to build up 120 to 125. My air allow my air pressure to build up 120 to 125 uh, PSI or maximum air pressure. Then I'm going to let you know that my uh, wheels are chocked for this exercise. I'll give the truck a little bit of help building up to that wheels chocked I'm gonna put the vehicle in first gear I'm gonna turn off my engine I'm gonna turn my switch back on to resupply power to the gauges and I'm gonna push in both valves the red and the yellow valves I'm gonna roll my window down and listen for air leaks this gives my gauges time to equalize after the initial pressure drop no air leaks now I'm going to look at my air gauges. I should be losing no more than three PSI in one minute. Continue. All right, now I'm going to apply approximately 90 pounds of pressure, 90 PSI to my brakes. And I'm looking at my air gauges, making sure I lose no more than four PSI in a minute. Continue. Okay, and I did. Now I'm going to begin to fan my brake pedal. Between 90 and 60 PSI, my low air warning light and buzzer should sound and appear. They must sound and appear before air pressure drops below 60 PSI. And they did. Now I'm going to continue to fan my brake pedal. Between 20 and 45 PSI, both, uh, both valves should pop out. The red first, followed by the yellow. And they did. All right, this indicates that my spring brakes are working properly. And it concludes my air brakes test. For my service brakes, uh, when we get ready to go out for the road test, I'll be moving at a minimum of five miles per hour. With light hand on the steering wheel, I'll apply sharp pressure to the brake pedal. And I'm making sure of three things. That my uh, service brakes work properly. That my uh, vehicle does not pull to one side or the other and that the ABS light does not appear. At the conclusion of your pre-trip inspection examination, your instructor will provide you with a test score and review the test results with you, providing you information on where you may need improvement.